14 Cows for America in collaboration with Wilson Kameli Nyoma, Carmen Agra Didi, illustrated by Thomas Gonzalez. The remote village waits for a story to be told. News travels slowly to this corner of Kenya. As Kameli nears his village, he watches a herd of bull giraffes cross the open grassland. He smiles. He has been away a long time. A girl sitting under a guava tree sees him first and cries out to the others. The children run to him with the speed and grace of cheetahs. He greets them with a gentle touch on the head, a warrior's blessing. The rest of the tribe soon surrounds Kameli. These are his people. These are the Maasai. Once they were feared warriors. Now they lived peaceably as nomadic cattle herders. They treat their cows as kindly as they do their children. They sing to them. They give them names. They shelter the young ones in their homes. Without the herd, the tribe might starve. To the Maasai, the cow is life. Supa! Hello! Kameli hears again and again. Everyone wants to greet him. His eyes find his mother across the Enkong, the ring of huts with their roofs of sun-baked dung. She spreads her arms and calls to him. Akua! Welcome, my son! Kameli sighs. He is home. This is sweeter and sadder because he cannot stay. He must return to the faraway country where he is learning to be a doctor. He thinks of New York then. He remembers September. A child asks if he has brought any stories. Kameli nods. He has brought with him one story. It has burned a hole in his heart. But first, he must speak with the elders. Later, in a tradition as old as the Maasai, the rest of the tribe gathers under an acacia tree to hear the story. There is a terrible stillness in the air as the tale unfolds. With growing disbelief, men Women and children listen. Buildings so tall they can touch the sky? Fires so hot they can melt iron? Smoke and dust so thick they can block out the sun? The story ends. More than 3,000 souls are lost. A great silence falls over the Maasai. Kameli waits. He knows his people. They are fierce when provoked, but easily moved to kindness when they hear of suffering or injustice. At last, an elder speaks. He is shaken. But above all, he is sad. What can we do for these poor people? Nearby, a cow lows. Heads turn toward the herd. To the Maasai, Kameli says softly, the cow is life. Turning to the elders, Kameli offers his only cow, Enkarus. He asks for their blessing. They gave it gladly, but they want to offer something more. 
The tribe sends word to the United States Embassy in Nairobi. In response, the embassy sends a diplomat. His jeep jounces along the dusty, rugged roads. He is hot and tired. He thinks he is going to meet with the Maasai elders. He cannot be more wrong. As the jeep nears the edge of the village, the man sits up. Clearly, this is no ordinary diplomatic visit. This is a ceremony. Hundreds of Maasai greet the American in full tribal splendor at the sight of the brilliant blood red tunics and spectacular beaded collars he can only marvel it is a day of sacred ritual young warriors dance leaping into the air like fish from a stream women sing mournful songs children fill their bellies with milk Speeches are exchanged, and now it is time. Kameli and his people gather on a sacred knoll far from the village. The only sound is the gentle chiming of cowbells. The elders chant a blessing in Ma as the Maasai people of Kenya present. 14 Cows for America. Because there is no nation so powerful, it cannot be wounded, nor a people so small, they cannot offer mighty comfort. Kameli, center with the Maasai elders, senior chief, to the right, and an elder who is in charge of the warrior camps to the left. A note from Kameli Nyoma. I am the Kameli in this story. I grew up in a small village in Kenya. When I was a little boy, my mama said I was too gentle to be a fierce Maasai warrior. I fed little nestlings in the bush and rescued drowning ants from water puddles. I loved taking care of the cows that belonged to the elders. I felt a close bond with them. A Maasai boy is like one of the calves in the herd. He drinks milk from the cows and feels protected by the bull. My mama was too poor to own a cow. I dreamt of having one someday for my mama and me. It was my biggest dream. As a young boy, I spent much of my time with the grandpas and grandmas of my tribe. It was through them that I learned my tender warrior heart was not a bad thing. They taught me that the Maasai valued more than strength and boldness. Our ancestors also valued compassion and kindness toward anyone in need, the orphan, the widow, the stranger. To heal the pain in someone's heart, they told me, you give them something that is close to your own heart. When I was older, I won a scholarship to study in the United States. Many American moms and dads welcomed me to their homes as they would their own child. Like the Maasai elders in my village, these people showed me kindness by taking me in and helping me get an education. America became my second home. I was in New York City on September 11, 2001. What happened that day was devastating. Many people were left without their mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. Like countless others, I watched brave firefighters and police officers risk their own lives to save people. My warrior heart could not sit still in me. I wanted to do something to help. 
My childhood heart told me what to do. Offer a sacrifice in the way of my people. To heal a sorrowing heart, give something that is dear to your own. I had saved enough to fulfill my dream and buy a cow. I decided that the cow, a symbol of life to our people, would be my offering to the grieving Americans. But some pains are too big for one chest to carry. I would ask the elders in my village to bless the cow, to make it special so the gift might take away some of the sadness from the American hearts. I returned to Kenya the following spring and told the story of that tragic day in New York City. Hearing my story, seeing my tears, the ancient spirit of my people was stirred up. When I presented my gift for blessing, others offered up their own precious cows. Fourteen cows were blessed that day. It was a great moment in my village. We were helping to heal a people far away. When the American ambassador and his wife came to our village to accept the cows, the Star Spangled Banner played over a loudspeaker during the ceremony. Although my people did not understand the song, they stood along with the Americans and placed their hands across their chests. Seeing hundreds of Maasai standing with him in respectful silence made the American diplomat cry. His tears caught the Maasai by surprise, and we were all swept up in the deep emotion of the moment. A connection between two cultures had been made. We felt we had taken some of America's pain into our Maasai hearts. These sacred healing cows can never be slaughtered. They remain in our care in Kenya under the guidance of the revered elder Mizi Oyimpoe. The original 14 have calved and the herd now numbers over 35. They continue to be a symbol of hope from the Maasai to their brothers and sisters in America. The Maasai wish is that every time Americans hear this simple story of 14 cows, they will find a measure of comfort and peace. This special flag commemorating the gift of Maasai cows is on display in the U.S. Embassy in Kenya. The flag will be placed at the National September 11th Memorial and Museum at the World Trade Center in New York City when the memorial opens.